All right, welcome back to the channel, Kyle Mohan Racing. We're all about the rotaries. We're going to talk about that brap. Today I was doing some water jacket porting, basically doing a little heat sink modification around the spark plugs in rotor housings. This has been done for years in the rotary industry, although it is not that common and generally uh, done only in racing application. I've seen more and more customers needing this type of modification and originally it was always done by hand and that's actually how I was doing this for this particular project but uh, nowadays there's also really nice CNC versions of this but uh, obviously that is pricey and that does take turnaround time this particular motor has to be done ASAP and the previous motor that came apart had the signs of excessive heat buildup in the cooling areas, which can cause cracking uh, around the spark plugs and failure to the water cooling system. Um, it can also cause shrinkage in this area. Again, although it's not particularly common to the general rotary application, when you get into extreme performance, uh, road racing, drifting, uh, excessive long uh, sustained RPM, uh, then you start to have excessive heat buildup. And if you're familiar with rotary engines, then you already know that the spark plugs are kind of unique. Uh, these particular ones are the 11.5s, so this would be one of the coolest plugs you can get from NGK Racing. Um, it's going to help protect against detonation, help keep excessive heat buildup down which protects your ceramic and electrode and also can help with the stagnation and heat buildup in the rotor housings so having the right tune having the right spark plug having a good cooling system that operates properly along with a cooling jacket mod can help rotaries sustained some of the most extreme conditions and help with longevity in application. And I've got actually an example right here of a rotor housing that failed due to excessive heat buildup. You can see there's actually cracks in the chrome and you've got the heat marks and shrinkage I'm talking about all built up around the spark plug uh, pocket, which would be the lower, which is the lead. Um, and you've got your trail up here, the smaller one. So I think generally you don't need to do water jacket modification. You can see this was not ported or modified. But uh, if you are having a repetitive issue where you're cracking around your rotor housings spark plug area, then that is a sign of excessive heat buildup or some type of failure within the cooling system. And you have to remember that as the water is flowing through a rotary engine, it's coming down the spark plug side first around the back plate and then back up the exhaust side and intake side to exit the block. So you can have a situation where at high RPM, you have too much heat buildup and the water is not actually able to cool as it's going past. Whether the water is moving too fast or just does not have enough surface area is I think the debate. And you can see in the late model uh, third generation housings, they've actually cut down into the face from the factory, uh, helping get water closer to the actual chrome surface, which was a factory modification to help cool the surface and combustion area of the rotor housing. But um, per friends at Mazda Racing, Mazda Speed, Racing Beat, Mazda Tricks, um, like I said, historical Le Mans race cars used this type of modification to slow the water down, create more surface area, and allow for more heat extraction around your spark plugs. Um, there's always trade-offs. Obviously, this is time-consuming. You run the risk of damaging a component if somebody were to improperly port it or if the CNC were to slip. But as you can see, mimicking what a heat sink has, basically ribbing, allowing the water to touch more surface area as it passes through, and the turbulence, thereby slowing the water down, helps 
this whole area get better heat extraction. But if you get better heat extraction, you may also see a slight rise in your cooling temperatures. So it's not necessarily that that means you're running hotter. It could mean that you're extracting the heat better, um, which is a good thing. And you can see again what we're trying to prevent, which is extreme heat buildup. And since we had this project on the bench, it's been a while. This is something I do to my race motors. I have this issue in my 20Bs. Uh, 1,000 horsepower, extreme EGT temps, extreme boost levels, nitrous. Um, I run very extreme combinations. So this is something I've done for years. But uh, it's rare that I see the need for it in most performance applications. In drag racing, you're not running the motor long enough to really have a benefit from this. They don't need the same type of cooling systems that like a rally car, road race car, drift car, time attack car, excessive performance street car uh, would need. Um, but where you are sustaining high RPM, high load for long durations of time, which can cause excessive heat buildup in the combustion area or on the spark plugs, then obviously it's a really good idea to make sure you're running the right plug. Optimize your rotor housings, optimize your tune, make sure your EGTs, make sure your combustion stoichiometric curve is on point. Um, it's all very important. Rotaries, because they're small motors making high heat and high horsepower numbers, are obviously easily susceptible to damage, but that's, I believe, because they are capable of making more horsepower per displacement than almost any other combustion motor that's readily available and been in production cars. So I hope this has kind of been a cool tech talk. Um, we got some more coming. I appreciate everybody's been watching the racing videos. Uh, feel free to drop questions. I do have a plan for the hybrid Renesis GSLSE 13B motor. Um, so hopefully I can get back on that soon, but we have been really busy at the shop getting orders out getting customer services done, and it's the middle of the year, so we have really been traveling around a lot with the Renewable Lubricants E-Flex Mazda Trix race team, and I'm so grateful for everybody's support. So I think that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, ask questions below. This is not for everybody, and obviously CNC looks a little nicer, but you can get in there with a small carbide bit save yourself some money and get all the benefits that the Le Mans cars back in the day were getting from heat sinking and porting your water jackets. But be careful. It's not easy. It's tricky. You can always hit up KMR Mazda Tricks if you need any help with that. All right, that's a wrap. I talk too much. Thanks. Rotary out. Bye.